Hi, I'm Paul Germain. Welcome to another session of Smart Voting. As you know, if you've watched the show before, we cover a wide variety of topics, from man overboard to docking. And the general idea is to provide you with some information that will help you make smarter decisions and have more fun on the water. Today's show is a little different, a little off the beaten path, uh, in an area that I think you're going to find very interesting, it, and it's the area of model boats. And joining us is a very experienced collector in that area, Fred Clausen. Fred. Hey, Paul. Nice to be with you in the collection room. Thank you very much. Yes. Good to see you. Fred, you know this is a really interesting hobby, uh, but before we get into it, can you share a little bit about your boating background and a little bit about when you got involved in the hobby? Sure. Well, I started probably when I was about 10 years old. I collected model boats and motors and played with them as a kid. Mm -hmm. And then when we moved to New Hampshire uh, 20 years ago, I decided to put some boats in a group of cottages that I bought as display models. And it turned out that they were a little too nice to have there. And <laughs> kids were playing with them. And uh, I said, I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to start collecting them. So one thing led to another. Yeah. So you've been, how long have you been collecting? About 25 years now. About 25 years, yeah. yeah but yeah. I still have a couple of my outboard motors from when I was a kid that are in the collection behind oh, us. Oh, you here. do? Yes. <laughs> okay. So there's a long history here. Yes, a long, very long history. All right. Well, it sounds like you've got just the, the raw ingredients to do our show today, so why don't we get started? Well, Fred, you know, this hobby of collecting uh, model boats is it's a big one. It encompasses a lot of models. Yes. And we, we can't cover them all, even in your own... <laughs> your own portfolio we can't ever all, but we've got a really cool sampling here today yes we do and you've got a neat boat uh, on display here can you share with us a little bit about some of the interesting aspects well this is the very first fleet line and you can tell by the box itself and you can see fleet line down in the bottom of okay. the lower right mm -hmm. and uh, this is an all wood boat has the flag in the front most all of our boats uh, do have the uh, Ver marine version of the uh, flag okay. uh, in there. And this has uh, no operating lights, but it is a battery powered boat. Okay, all right. And what year would you say that is, roughly? That was probably in the uh, early 50s. Early 50s, yeah. okay. And we've got this boat here. It's same fleet line, right? Because we're focusing fleet this show yep. on fleet line today, which was. Uh, Originally based in uh, Japan. It was made in Japan. It was yeah. K and O Motors, mm -hmm. and they came over to the United States and they uh, did their warehousing in uh, uh, Van Nuys, California, and then they brought the production line over here. Mm -hmm. And what's unique about this boat here? This is the smallest one. This is a nine and a half inch. It's called the uh, Fiesta Queen. Mm -hmm. And what Fleet Line did is they took the boxes instead of having pictures of the actual boat. Yeah. They had a generic box with oh. the name on it. Okay. And this one has the operating spotlight in the front, mm -hmm. and it probably was never in the water. It has some age marks on it, but uh, it's in perfect condition. But yeah. it is, again, one of the smaller ones. What that, would they have for an engine in this? Right? It's a very small uh, engine. Later on, we're going to show you some of the sample engines on the inside. Yeah. Uh, but it's the small boat gets a small engine. But it is powered. It is right? battery-powered, and the battery-powered light in the, in the front okay. spotlight. All right. Well, that's an interesting. It's a classic old inboard design, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. That's a nice-looking boat. We've got another boat right here. Okay, this is the Sea Lancer, also by Fleet Line. This okay. is an all plastic boat. All plastic. The other one was wood, was That it? was all wood, yes. All wood, okay. And as we go through the show, some are plastic, some are wood, and some are mixture. When did they uh, make the transition? They didn't make a total transition, but uh, it was around the uh, 80s when they started bringing in more and more plastic. And oh, first they made okay. the decks wood, which you'll see in a few minutes, and mm -hmm. then uh, they went to all plastic. And this is chronologically out of order, but it is this show we're running on based on the size. So this yes. is one of the small ones. Yeah, so you've got some details here. Looks like you've got cowls, fresh air cowls for the engine, and you've got and this uh, our on and off switch oh, okay. back here. You've got an interesting cockpit back here at the stern here. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, kind of like a sun pad almost, but yeah. it's recessed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very interesting boat. Again, an inboard design. Yep. And it's a nice picture on the box. Yes, picture of the sail answer on the bo box. And uh, sometimes the boxes are generic and they don't have any pictures at all right. uh, for the different manufacturers. But this is nice that it does have the picture. That is beautiful, yeah. Now, we've been looking at some inboard boats here, and this one's an outboard, right? This is an outboard. Yeah. It's called, called when, did these, when did they start producing these? 
they did these back early in the 50s also. Uh, oh, some were inboard, some were outboard. Okay. Uh, they wanted to cover all the lines. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an unusual boat with the long nose in the front. Some oh, people does. think yeah. it's a race boat. Very long deck, yeah. But this is the Sea Spray. Sea spray. And the motor on the back is a generic motor. Mm -hmm. uh, Fleetline did make some of their own motors, which they we'll did. see in a little while. Okay. But this is a generic motor. It fits with the size of the boat. Mm -hmm. And the batteries are under that uh, red section uh, under the uh, bow. Okay. And you got a, a cockpit area here in the back, a couple yep. of cleats. And how about the box? The box is uh, uh, original, I that's, guess, right? That's original, well used, but it's, again, the generic box with just the name on there, no pictures of boats, which right. is what Fleetline went to to cut production costs and keep it simple. Oh, I see. So, every All the boats had numbers. This is number 651. And probably was about four dollars and ninety-eight cents for the boat only when they made it. Oh, that's the motor funny. would have been additional. Okay. Some some of the fleet lines come with motors in the package, but this particular one did not. It just came with the boat itself. Well, Fred, you know one of the things I find interesting about this model boat collecting is the whole variety of boats that they that they made models of, and the one you've got here. Is, is actually a hydroplane, right? Right, it's one of the only hydroplanes that Fleetline made. They made it in two different color schemes. Oh, they did. This one is a white uh, body with the orange accent points. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is just a reverse. It's uh, oh. orange where the white is. Yeah. And it has their own Fleetline engine on the back, which is a 40 horse Johnson. Oh. The batteries, which are, go under the uh, steering wheel uh, hatch cover there. Mm -hmm. And uh, this box, as you can see the picture on the front of it, that's uh, what it looks like, and that's how it was sold. So it's especially important, if at all possible, to have the box with the model, yes, right? Yes, very important. Yeah, Probably adds about 30% of the value, something yeah. like that. I bet that boat would skip right along. Yes, and it only was $3.49 <laughs> when it sold initially. <laughs> How about this boat? This is a little different. It looks like a cruiser, a small cruiser. Yeah, it's a cabin cruiser. This is the L Captain. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all plastic. It has no wood on it. As you can see, it has oh. the cloth uh, canopy on the top. When did and this come out? This probably would have been in the um, mid-60s, something like that. Oh, is that right? Uh, okay. A lot of times we don't have exact dates on this yeah. when they're made, but yeah. the, that's that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this is this, one of the early plastic boats. Yes, and yeah. it has the Fleetline engine on the top, on the back. On the back, It is yeah. uh, the blue uh, oh, yeah. uh, Sea Dart engine sea outboard. Dart. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, and it's, right. again, battery-powered. It does mm -hmm. not have any working lights on it, but it does uh, have... <laughs> a speed for the side based on the engine on the back. It goes moves along pretty oh, well. Oh, does it really? Yes, it okay. does. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this boat here. It's another one. Yep. This is still packaged in the original box. Still packaged in the original box. It was uh, never taken out and played with it. This one came with a trailer. Mm -hmm. This is the Viking. Okay. And uh, this also is an outboard. It has a uh, 40 horsepower Johnson on the back, also made by Fleetline. Okay. And it's interesting to note they only made about 29,000 of these boats uh, oh, sold did. this way. Is that an unusual number? Is that a is that a much smaller yeah. number than normal? Actually, no. It's on the large size. Oh, uh, they okay. some of them have only been made seven or eight thousand uh, in oh. the. Oh, so this is very popular. This is a very popular one. It sold very well because of the size and the price. Mm -hmm. It initially was three dollars and forty nine cents when it came out. <laughs> right. So they uh, they made it in a variety of different colors too. So this this is the color that was the most recent, and that's why I've kept it in the box rather than taking it out. So yeah. it shows the most current version. Well, it's understandable why it was so popular, especially at that price point. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. How about this little guy? It looks like a, like a little racer. <laughs> it is. This is known as the Zephyr. The Zephyr. Uh, again, also Fleetline. Mm -hmm. Has an unbranded uh, outboard on the back. Okay. They did not make this one. I don't actually know who made it. Okay. Um, but it's in good condition. It was played with a little bit. The batteries go under the deck. Okay. And, oh, would that be a couple of C batteries? Not those, C batteries. Those Triple are probably, a, maybe. No, these are probably C batteries probably C. in there. Without pulling it apart, it's uh, hard to remember yeah. you know, that. Right. Um, That's a lot of juice for a little uh, boat like this. Yes, and it, it does move along. And as we talked in the past, you have to put a string on the front to hold it and get the boat back, or you have to set the engine. And so it comes back uh, in a circle to you. Right, right, right. Well, that's just a that's a, just a neat model of the boats of that day. Yes, yeah. it's a good race boat. Yeah. Well, Fred, one of the things I think is so interesting about the model boats is they each are they each have like a personality, if you will, just like cars used to have yes. in the old days. <laughs> And uh, this one's got a dragon on it. What, what's, what's going on with this? Well, again, made in Japan, the Japanese were very famous for having dragons on everything. Mm -hmm. There was an older wooden boat that had the dragon painted on it, but this particular one, it's called the Dragon Boat. Mm -hmm. This is a paper decal a Fleetline put on. Oh. 
This is, a, again, a battery-powered one, mm -hmm. and it has a working spotlight in the front. Oh, that's neat. And the, it's been played with, and actually the uh, hatch cover has been replaced. Somebody yes. built a replacement part for yeah. it. Looks pretty good, actually. It's, it's actually very good. Yeah. And this is the on and off switch in okay. here, this little lever. It's All a, right. You can probably see the engine a little bit. Yes. And it's a smaller engine, but the boat is a, it's, um, like a Bakelite plastic. It's a heavy mm -hmm. plastic compared mm -hmm. to some of the other plastics we looked at that were just very thin uh, uh, plastic. This is a very durable this boat. This is a very durable boat. Yeah, it's got some nicks and scratches, and it's a takeoff of what they called the Sea Babe, which is another boat that they had. Oh. They just took the Sea Babe and then they uh, added the Dragon decal. Oh, okay. Here's our next one. It says Thunderbolt on it. It's got, it's got that kind of feeling to it. It's got the black and the white. It's a it's this is made up as a fishing boat it has been restored by mm -hmm. a friend of mine out in uh, Ohio mm -hmm. and it's a very good restoration it's uh, got fishing poles sitting inside right. uh, all wood put a new life uh, preserver on the front yeah and this was marketed with the Fleetline hurricane engine which is on the back yeah uh, it was sold as a package and uh, the boat itself sold for four dollars and ninety-five cents when it first came out. It did, but it was a very popular boat. They had about twelve thousand that were made in this particular line. It's funny how they call the Hurricane because I think Mercury had a motor called the Hurricane, the hurricane. back in that that vintage, yeah. and it looks very similar to that. And they may have tied it together with the name Thunderbolt. Uh, you never right. know if, uh, how well, they, they used, how they marketed these. They called it the Thunderbolt Ignition on the old Mercury. Oh, okay. Yep. yep. So let's get this guy in here. Now this guy's on a trailer as opposed to a box or a stand. That's a little unusual. Yes, there's a couple of them that came with trailers. The one that we didn't take out of the box before, that had a trailer with it similar to this. Mm -hmm. But this particular rocket boat in this color was sold with the trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, also made in two other different colors, different shades of uh, tan and uh, Brown, yeah, beige, yeah, beige yeah. and uh, then they have a red one. The red one's the most popular. This is uh, one of the better ones being in this color scheme. It's like a Batmobile because it got yes. the wings on it. <laughs> Yeah, my favorite of the wind, uh, the fin boats. Oh, uh, it is. Yes. Yeah. And this one has a working spotlight in the front, mm -hmm. and it does have the on and off switch in the back here, okay. and the batteries are housed underneath the uh, uh, beige, the tan uh, cover. And this came as a set. It the came boat as and a the set. Trailer. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the few that came with the trailer. Yeah. And then here's okay. the uh, last boat in the series. This one's got a different color to it, and the hull design is actually a little different than some of the ones we've seen earlier. Yes, uh, this is the Capri, Capri. and this one, mm -hmm. they, uh, it's supposed to have a metal top on the uh, oh, it does. on it, but it's missing. You'll see in another one coming up, it has the metal top, it's similar. Mm -hmm. uh, this has the working spotlight, yeah. uh, light blue color with the uh, white side stripes, yes. and it's an inboard boat, and this is the on and off switch, mm -hmm. and as I mentioned, most of our boats have the uh, Marine U.S. flag on the back. All right, and it's a double cockpit here. Double cockpit yeah yep and it's uh, in played with condition I have not had it restored it's a very hard to find uh, this design Oh, it is? Yes. Yeah. Oh. There's not, they, they didn't I'm, make many? I'm not sure how many they made. They just don't show up uh, like some of the other ones do. Uh, this is the only one I've ever been able to purchase. Others I have duplicates of, but this oh. one is, it's a one of boat. It's a rare bird. Yeah, for me, it is a rare bird, yes. <laughs> and so condition doesn't matter. I like it as, as it is. All the parts are there. Yeah, it's a beauty. Well, Fred, when you go into an area like collecting model boats, particularly vintage boats, you need some resources, and, and, and quite frankly, there are a number of good resources out there to help people with it, right? Here's yes. an example. Initially, most people were what we are called closet collectors and didn't tell anybody <laughs> about what they were doing, Yeah. but more and more now with eBay out there that uh, there's more things on eBay, mm -hmm. uh, people are able to share information. This particular book is all about Fleetline, which is the subject of our show today, yeah. and this is made by Lance Liebig, who is the owner's son of Fleetline, and he made it in uh, 2012. It is available on eBay now and it has very good information with color pictures and it has a lot of history of mm -hmm. the uh, Fleetline models. It's very and extensive, it's, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's $37 on eBay right Not now. Not bad. Now, here's, here's an interesting book. And this is a, like a collection of pictures or photographs or something, right? right? Uh, the predecessor to Fleetline Boats was K&O models when they were done over in Japan, and they're known for their outboard motors, and mm -hmm. they're the best ones out there. Mm -hmm. And this boat, uh, one of the gentlemen uh, took the pictures of all the uh, motors and put them in the boat and had the book made on Shutterfly. It's an expensive book, but it's got great pictures inside. Wow, what a great resource. 
Here's another one, too. I can tell from the, uh, the little stickies you have. You use this book quite a bit. Use it constantly. This yeah. is made by uh, Bill Eric. Uh, this is a hard-to-find book. He did this one probably about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's got great information primarily about boats and uh, with color pictures and some black and white pictures and all the advertising materials you'd ever want to see. <laughs> And this book is similar, and again, it looks like an important reference for you. Yes, this is mostly about toy outboard motors, but then it also has pictures of boat advertising. And again, it's just a, a reference point. As you can see, it's about an inch thick. Yes. And this is another hard-to-find one. All right, and here's the, here's the final book here. Um, right. Again, another great resource for someone that's interested in the hobby, right? This is great for pictures. This is an auction that was done about eight, nine years ago out mm -hmm. in Minnesota, mm -hmm. the Mickelson Collection, and it shows the prices paid for all the items. It's real boats and model boats and motors, anything to do with boating. Fantastic resource. Right. There mm -hmm. are two other sites. Uh, one is on Facebook. It's called mm -hmm. Toy Outboard Motors. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Collecting Toy Outboards. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, a lot of information on there. Pictures are shared. And then there's another one called uh, ToyOutboards.com and that's Bob McDonald down in uh, the greater New York area who's done that. So th those are great internet resources. Mm -hmm. Well, Fred, you know, Fleetline was a large and popular manufacturer of model boats and they made quite a range and I see the boat that we have on display now is a little larger than some of the earlier ones we were looking at. What's the construction? This one is all wood. Mm -hmm. It's a cabin cruiser. Mm -hmm. And as the boats get a little bit larger, so do the initial prices. And oh. this one was uh, sold initially without the engine for six ninety five. Six ninety five. So you can see it's getting a little higher than the two and three dollar ones we talked about at first. So you get the box and the boat. Right? The box and the boat. Yes. And you could buy the. This is the Hurricane engine again. That was very popular with this particular boat. Mm -hmm. You can buy that uh, separately. And uh, this one has the plunger on and off switch in the front, okay. uh, which we've seen in previous shows. Mm -hmm. Again, the cloth, cloth canopy, yeah. but this is an all wood construction. And it's, uh, I believe it's been restored looking at the paint job, but it's been restored very well. Mm -hmm. And it does have the generic uh, fleet line box oh, okay. uh, without a picture of the boat on the front of it. That looks like an old Chris Craft. You're very close, yes. Yeah. How about this guy? It has twin Mercury's on it, huh? Yes, this is a kind of a special boat to me mm -hmm. because initially it sold for five ninety eight. It's called the Twin Whiz. Twin it's Whiz. an all plastic boat. Yeah. But what's interesting is the engines on the back. Yes. It's the Mercury design, and yes. it's made by Fleetline, but they're tin rather than the die cast that the uh, other ones are. Oh. Uh, this I was able to find on a buy it now on eBay. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, with shipping $50, which was a tremendous price because yes. the engines alone are close to $200 each. Is that right? So this is probably my best find on eBay. It was a buy it now, mm -hmm. and I got very happy with it um, when, when I was able to get it. Yeah, I remember those original motors. Quite frankly, yeah. when I was a kid, my brother had one of those. It was a white Mercury around 20 horsepower. Yes. So it's a very yep. familiar engine to me. Yep. Yeah. They also made this boat in an aqua and white, uh, but the, the red and white is, uh, in my opinion, the better looking boat. Yeah, that's a nice color combination. Yes. Now here's a green boat. What, what's the construction on this? Is this a mixture of plastic and wood? Or? Yeah, this is the light plastic again. This is known as the mm -hmm. El Dorado. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of boats ago I said that it was missing the tin top. This one has its tin top. It's All the right. same basic design as the uh, Capri that we looked at a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. But the Capri was an inboard. This is an outboard. And it has a mercury on the back, uh, plastic engine. Yeah. And you can see there is a, a little pull cord there for, for effect. <laughs> but it is all battery powered this one is in quite played with condition yes batteries go in the front under the hatch cover mm -hmm. and then it ha does have a working spotlight uh, on the front that they were able to use oh yeah yeah but the color this color green is one of my favorites and it's just uh, there are not too many boats that are that particular color green. no no I believe it yeah, that's unusual unusual and how about this one this was an even larger <laughs> cruiser Yes, this is larger, and again, so is the price. This yes. is called the Seacomber, Seacomber. and uh, the initial price on this was ten ninety five, mm -hmm. and they started uh, putting some options on here. As you can see on the front is the Buick, or what we call the Buick ornament, okay, uh, like you see on a Buick car, and then it has a working spotlight. The particular cabin is tin. Oh, it is. The deck is wood, mm -hmm. and the body of the boat is plastic. Oh, boy. And uh, it has an inboard engine, mm -hmm. and they believe uh, 
the, the spotlight does work, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. and it's got the horn on the roof. This is a very popular one. It was. Uh, yes. Oh, and okay. it, this is the original box, the generic uh, fleet line box without the picture of the boat. Mm -hmm. And I noticed on the, when I look on the undercarriage, if you will, it's got a really deep skeg. So they yep. did that so they could use them in a pond or a lake or something. If they hit a rock, it wouldn't hurt the propeller? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you set the rudder on the, on the uh, bottom here. Mm -hmm. uh, you, and it, you can see the rudder says made in Japan, where yeah. m most of the uh, initial fleet line boats were made. Hmm. Well, Fred, you know, an integral part of a power boat, obviously, is the engine or the motor. Yeah. And that's the case Correct. with model boats as well. We can see you got a sample boat set up here, and we can see the, the little electric motor in the center there. Yeah, this is another fleet line boat. It is the Sea uh, Babe, which we showed the Dragon before. Mm -hmm. This is a, a powerful engine to have to power this Bakelite material boat. Yeah. As you can see, there's a little coupler spring yes. that's in the middle here that goes down to the shaft and to the propeller. Yes. There are, this is a unique motor because I, I don't have any other boats with this particular motor in it. Okay. But we do show on the table here, these are on the top row, these are horseshoe motors. Mm -hmm. They're made by a variety of manufacturers, mm -hmm. K&O we talked about before, yes. TMY, KS, K&O, IMP, and then a smaller, unnamed one. Mm -hmm. Those are the most popular ones for the bigger boats that provide the most power. Yes. This one in the front is a TMY motor, but it's a smaller motor as in all of these other motors. Mm -hmm. This one is made by K&S, whereas all the other ones are just generic boat motors that go in a lot of the smaller plastic boats. Okay. They have no real uh, collectability other than they power the boat, which is the most important thing. Right. So, so if one of those goes bad, the, you would just get a replacement motor for it. You wouldn't bother rebuilding it or correct. anything. Uh, one of the horseshoes, you might. I yeah, guess. you might rebuild it. Right? Some of my friends have repaired the wiring and the horseshoe motors and enjoy working on them, but the other motors in the front are really disposable motors, and you can buy them uh, rather inexpensively, like five or six dollars. The horseshoes can run ten, fifteen, and maybe twenty or twenty-five for the big horseshoe motor. I see. Well, Fred, do you know Fleetline again had an expansive line, and it gets larger and larger. The boats <laughs> we're talking about here, and then a mixture of materials. This one that we're looking at now. What was the what were the materials used for this one? This one is a plastic hull and a wood deck. Okay. But they did have some variety in the colors of the wood deck. They had a light brown deck instead of the dark chocolate brown that we have here. Mm -hmm. And actually, this is the Sea Wolf, and this is the second version of the Sea Wolf. There's a smaller version of the Sea Wolf that mm -hmm. they made uh, a few years before this. But this one is a common uh, body design. But the decking is different. It has working spotlights in the front. They happen okay. to be both clear instead of red and green. Mm -hmm. And it's got our famous uh, flag on the back, the right. uh, marine flag. Right. And it's in really good condition. It probably was cleaned up by somebody, but uh, not by me. It has been played with a little bit. But it's unusual because it's got a very large windshield uh, on the boat. Yeah. And, uh, Any idea of the value of something like that these days, Fred? To me, it's probably 100, 120, something like that. Uh, you can find them in worse condition for 60 or $70. Okay. Shipping gets to be a little expensive because of the weight of the boat and the size of the oh, boat. Okay. Uh, if it goes priority mail, then there's an extra charge for the size of the box. Oh. All right. Speaking of boxes, we've got one here that's still in the box. Yes. Which is an unusual thing, right? This is a display box, and this is the way it was set up in the store. This is the Commodore, mm -hmm. and it is a plastic hull with a wood deck and a wood cabin. Right. The, uh, re the antenna on it is a replacement one. It should okay. be a little bit larger. All right. But your camera probably can't see, but the lights in the front are red and green, mm -hmm. whereas the last one we had was uh, total uh, clear bulbs. Okay. And this is an inboard. Uh, this, it's a very nice detail. It's played with condition. Mm -hmm. And um, it, uh, though, in the back is the switch. You pull it up to turn it on and okay. to push it down to turn it off. All right. So it's like some, maybe a, some 20 uh, footer, a model of a 20 footer uh, or something. Maybe Somewhere a little bigger, point. 24, 25. 24, yeah, something 25. like that. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that's just a neat <laughs> boat there, right there. And let's take a look at this one here. Now, this is more of our traditional speed boat. Yes. This yes. is the Dolphin, which is the same hull design as the, pre, uh, the one, two boats ago that we looked at, okay. uh, the Sea Wolf. Yeah. But uh, this is an outboard, and this has a K&O Mercury on the back. It's mm -hmm. the uh, 1956 Thunderbolt 40 horse, 
which is a very valuable motor, has a little ding oh, in the top. Yes. But uh, overall, the boat is in great condition. And it's got the uh, b uh, bumper on the side, which somebody has added. Okay. And uh, again, cleaned it up. The steering wheel is uh, not working. It just goes around it rotates. and rotates. Yeah. But it doesn't control the turn or tilt of the engine. All right. And you can see the logo on the front has the Dolphin logo oh. uh, on both sides. Oh, Those that's details right. could that's be right. applied. And I'm looking at yeah. the color combination of that engine. A lot of people don't remember, but the, the old Mercury's, they yes. did have a raspberry color scheme to them back in the old days. In the 50s, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so they kept it very accurate. Yes. Well, Fred, here's another unusual boat. This looks like, like a cabin cruiser, but outboard powered. And it's funny, I look at the decks, and I remember boats of this era used to have canvas decks. They'd have the <laughs> wood and the canvas yes. and the paint. So that was very authentic yes. to the boats of that time. Yep. Well, this, this is called the uh, Fleetline Marlin, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a 17-inch boat with the engine on it, and it comes in two different colors. This one has the green uh, on, below the waterline, where mm -hmm. there's also a blue below the waterline. Okay. This is a very popular one. They actually made 32,000 of these oh boats my over God. their career. Wow. So it was a good selling boat. Yes. And as we said before, the size of the boat gets bigger, so does the starting price. Yeah. The starting price on this was $14.95. Okay. And that, of course, is without the engine on without the back. Without the engine. Okay. Yes. The engine is very special. It's a K&O engine. Mm -hmm. It's the Johnson Super Seahorse which is a 50 horsepower engine mm. and because of the makeup of the back of it, it's nicknamed the porthole. The porthole, yeah. And it's one of the more powerful engines, sought after engine, even in this uh, played with condition probably could be four or five hundred dollars. Is that right? Yeah. Um, the boat itself is well played with. You can see some cracking in the top mm -hmm. in, the, in the, mm -hmm. uh, the beige deck color. Right. But overall structurally it's in great shape. The canvas cap top is uh, quite uh, tattered and the windshield is uh, quite uh, dirty. Right. But it means there's a lot of memories tied with this boat, <laughs> and right. I don't think it needs to be restored. I think it looks great the way it is. I do too, I do too. Well, this one's coming in on a trailer here. Yes, very unique trailer. Neat. Yeah, okay. I like the color scheme of this boat too. It's got the white and the blue. It looks like an old Century or Chris Craft or something like that. Yep. This is special because it was restored for me by my friend John Guest down in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. He put a lot of time into cleaning it up. He didn't repaint anything. He has oh, he a way did. of just buffing the uh, chrome parts and uh, turning them into actually better than they uh, sold initially. Really? And this is another 17-inch boat with the uh, U.S. flag on the back, the yep. Marine one. Mm -hmm. And this has the... Uh, uh, Evan Rood, Evan Rood I, yeah, 59 yeah. Evan Rood, the uh, 50 horse uh, Lark 450. I remember that motor. And I, I mentioned that this was uh, special because partially a trailer. I do have to lift this off just to show the trailer mm -hmm. because this is a handmade trailer. Uh, v very expensive, but I had to have one of them to complete the collection. Of course. And I could never afford a second one, but it's just perfect. The restored boat and the restored trailer. Yeah. And this one is the unique design as far as the uh, wave on the side. Oh, and yeah. And this is called the Vagabond. The Vagabond. Yeah. Okay. And we've got one other one here. This is another little cruiser. It looks like it's made out of plastic. All plastic. This mm -hmm. is kind of an inexpensive, inexpensive version. Okay. Uh, this totally sold for nine ninety eight as a boat itself without oh, the motor. Good value. Uh, yes, and they made twenty four thousand uh, of, of not, yeah twenty four thousand of these, mm -hmm. and the motor is unique because when it did work, it had it's called the Mercury Zoom. Yes. But you would put the batteries in and hook it up, and it would be brrr, it had sound effects okay. to it, <laughs> which is the only motor. It came in white and it came in black. Okay. And it's the only motor that. Had had those sound effects but this was a uh, definitely a, a at the later end of the fleet line uh, time period and was definitely a price driven model mm -hmm. of being 998 uh, on the market yeah was it very yeah. popular very popular yeah. yes yep. yeah, yeah and a lot of times you'd find you find him without the windshields and without the horns uh, this one's in overall very good condition it's complete yeah yes well friend it's hard to believe but uh, gonna wrap up the show we're out of time <laughs> And uh, we've covered a lot of different aspects of the Fleet Line product line, a lot of different boats over the years, different models, different size, different construction. Very, very interesting. Um, is there anything you'd like to add before we wrap up the show today? Well, the fun part of the hobby for me is the other collectors that I've met through eBay or through antique stores and restoring boats and collecting boats. We all share information. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of these days, I hope to do a book or a website on it, but we'll see where that takes me. <laughs> that would be neat. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining me today. Great, Paul. Thank you very much for coming up. And thank you, Smart Boating viewers, for watching the show. 
If you have comments or questions, please visit us, visit us on our website, www.smartvotingus.com. Thank you.